This is the Weather Extreme video. This is for the first day of March 2012, the first day of meteorological spring, and uh, we've got a potentially major severe weather threat coming up tomorrow and tomorrow night, so we'll focus on that. Let's start with some sky cam shots around the network at the somewhat insane hour of 5 a.m. when I produce this. Uh, here's a look at downtown Fayette up in northwest Alabama. Things are calm there. Here's a look at the lights of the city of Gadsden. And from Shelby County, that's our sky cam on the campus of the University of Montevallo. We have uh, no weather issues this morning, except for a few scattered showers around. All right, uh, here's the deal. The system that brought the active weather yesterday, that's uh, dampening out and moving up into eastern Canada. And as the upper support uh, fades away, we've got this uh, moist air mass that won't go anywhere. And a new trough is forming out west, and that will be progressive, and that will set the stage for more severe weather. Uh, there's the surface chart. Uh, this analysis has the front near Muscle Shoals. Might be a little farther south than that, but uh, clearly the front has lost its southward push. So we'll stay in a fairly moist air mass today. And that's a peak at the radar shortly after 5 o'clock, and you can see a band of showers uh, uh, south of that front from near Greensboro to Verbena to Alexander City to Roanoke, and still some thunder and lightning involved over in East Alabama. But, uh, you know, that front's just going to sit there today, maybe drift north, so we'll mention a chance of scattered showers, maybe some thunder, but uh, certainly no severe weather problems today or tonight. Pretty good thermal contrast setting up with the front. You can see a pretty sharp gradient uh, over northwest Alabama, you cross the front, you've got 30s and 40s. Down here, we're in the muggy 60s this morning. All right, there's our watch warning map as of early this morning. Uh, uh, no major issues. We've got winter weather advisories for a pretty good chunk of the west with that new trough. Winter storm warning up in the northeast with the exiting trough. And uh, red flag warning for uh, windy and dry conditions over parts of west Texas and Oklahoma. Now, today, there is the standard slight risk of severe weather. Uh, for places like Memphis and Cape Girardeau and Paducah, Springfield, and that's for the possibility of th storms that might produce hail. Uh, those should be basically elevated on the north side of the front, so no real issues with that today. But this is the great concern. This is tomorrow, uh, and of course, this outlook is valid from 6 o'clock tomorrow morning until 6 o'clock Saturday morning, a 24-hour period. We've got the enhanced moderate risk now from... Uh, near Columbus, Mississippi, Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, and Gadsden North uh, to near Cincinnati. And uh, within that risk, that includes, uh, of course, uh, Birmingham, Muscle Shoals, Huntsville, Nashville, Louisville, Lexington, and Cincinnati. And this is the troubling uh, you know, chart coming from SPC. Uh, uh, that's not all that common. I'll put it that way. There is a 45% probability of severe weather in any form within 25 miles of a given point in that area in the moderate risk and that is very significant and uh, so obviously we've got to approach this thing with great caution and then on day three which is Saturday just low in five percent severe weather probabilities off to the east and let's don't forget it's going to rain a lot here uh, this is the rain now this counts the rain we had last night and the rain that we'll deal with uh, over the next 48 hours and this is showing a bullseye of three and a half inches near Aniston so, you know, some flooding issues, totally not out of the question here. Let's see if we can drill down and take a look at this thing. This is the uh, modeling. This is the global forecast system valid at noon today. The 06C run, and this is at 500 millibars, or about 18,000 feet off the ground. There's a new trough out west. And down below that, we got the stall front. So, again, uh, today we don't expect any, you know, weather issues. A lot of clouds around, mild, muggy, and I say mild, I'm almost warm, uh, for the first day of March with highs well up in the 70s today. In fact, the GFS is at 78 and the NAM is at 77. Scattered showers, maybe some thunder. Tomorrow, the trough digs and gets closer. The flow becomes difluent aloft, which adds to the upward motion. And down below that, the surface low is over Illinois, 1,000 millibars with a trailing front down through Arkansas. And certainly that puts us in a very favorable quadrant for severe weather. Uh, we think the day will be windy, uh, warm, highs getting up, maybe approaching 80 tomorrow. And that certainly will make for an unstable air mass. The air becomes buoyant. And uh, we'll go to tomorrow night at uh, midnight. Surface low deepens rapidly down to 988 millibars with the front near Muscle Shoals. And everything at that point should roll over into a squall line. And, of course, the main threat will shift from tornadoes to uh, damaging straight-line winds. 
And this run is faster all of a sudden. This is noon Saturday, and it's got everything out of here. So, uh, you know, a lot of people have these events Saturday morning, and I know we've been waffling on this. Uh, but we'll look at the RPM, which is a higher resolution model. This is noon tomorrow. And we could see convection as early as noon, uh, if this is right, over the northern half of the state. I mean, we might have to adjust our timing a little bit here to go noon to midnight uh, based on this look. We'll go to 6 o'clock tomorrow evening. The squall line is developing near the northwest corner of the state, and any of those storms out ahead of that thing could be severe, and the discrete storms that form out ahead of that could possibly produce a tornado. Go to midnight Friday night. A pretty nasty squall line is coming through here. And with that, of course, the greatest potential is for damaging straight-line winds. And look at this now. This is Saturday morning at 6 o'clock. Everything is out of here. So I would tend to favor this solution. So if you got something planned Saturday morning, it looks a whole lot better. I'll put it that way uh, in terms of the rain being gone. Now let's look at the severe weather parameters. This is uh, the instability. In the, you know, Part of the severe weather equation, it's the ability for air parcels to rise easily and not... No capping inversion, and this is at uh, 6 o'clock tomorrow evening, and the instabilities are as high as they've been. And notice they really peak up there around Cincinnati, Ohio at 2,600 joules with the amounts down this way closer to 1,500 to uh, 2,000 joules, which is interesting. We'll look at the instability, the uh, shear. This is the veering of the wind with altitude in the lowest three kilometers of the atmosphere in relation to storm motion. And the bigger numbers are up north. Again, now, now certainly those numbers do support severe weather here. Don't get me wrong. But look at the EHI. This is the combination of the uh, instability and helicity. And boy, that thing is just maxed out at Cincinnati. Um, and another max is near Chattanooga in North Georgia. And this is valid at uh, 6 o'clock tomorrow evening. So understand, we, we have to be very weather aware Tomorrow and tomorrow night, no doubt about that. There's a significant chance of severe weather, but it could be. You know, the really significant stuff is north of here. We'll see how it plays out. We'll check the uh, significant tornado parameter. This is valid at 9 o'clock tomorrow night, and the numbers are in the 1 to 3 range, and that's very significant. We've seen them higher. In fact, really, the higher numbers are up there over Ohio, where the uh, you know shear will be higher. So, yes, a tornado threat. It could be the greater tornado threat will be north of here. And then the whole thing rolls over into a squall line with potential for damaging straight line winds. And I, you know, I guess in the timing, maybe noon to th tomorrow until 3 a.m. Saturday. I think we have to extend it past midnight for the squall line. And, of course, tomorrow morning and later today, we'll be much more specific and update all of this. All right. Again, uh, Saturday, we uh, start to clear out. Now, Sunday looks colder all of a sudden. Uh, the thickness values are way down on this run. This would suggest a high only in the 50s on Sunday. So uh, the weekend will be cool but dry. Monday of next week will be in great shape. High in the 60s. Tuesday looks good. Wednesday still dry. And all of a sudden Thursday, a week from today, is still dry. You know, we've seen some runs that bring in thunderstorms on Thursday. Not this time. In fact, really, the next day, March 8th, we're still dry. So... At the moment, a pretty good chunk of next week looks uh, dry. We'll check the end of the forecast on March the 16th. Cold air here? Nope, not with that look. We've got ridging, and that would be mild and dry if that's the case. And again, no sign of any major late-season winter weather mischief for the next two weeks. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this morning. We'll have notes on the blog. The next video here by 3.30 or so this afternoon. And if you live around these parts and can watch us on TV, and even if you don't, you can watch us on the live stream. We're on ABC 3340 News this evening at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and God bless. The first thing you've got to understand, you cannot rely on an outdoor siren. You cannot hear those inside a home, a building, a church. It won't work. You've got to get something inside your house. That's a weather radio or maybe a smartphone app. We work with a company that's developed a wonderful weather radio app for Android phones and iPhones. It knows where you are, and if you're in a tornado warning polygon, you get the warning. And if you're not, you don't. It's an effective device, and it's a great way to be sure you get the warning.